was cracking big dogs welcome back to the channel welcome back nicholas snacks welcome back animal we're uh we're headed strictly into fantasy football kingdom today baby i know we've been talking a lot of football a lot of banter a lot of bullshit but today is the day we turn towards the 2019 fantasy football season baby Draft day. we can't get enough of that and uh we know 2018 just wrapped up but listen in today's world you gotta gain an edge and the edge starts by preparing literally right now the edrin james starts right <laughs> now james. the edrin james of your 2019 fantasy football season begins we're already late, to be honest with you. Yeah, we are. We're, we're like, probably we, going to lose. We actually, we're a week we late. actually took time off, so yeah. we're, we, we're a week late. We were Joe drink, probably we were drinking whiskey on Christmas Eve. Like <sighs> Joe locked up. We had to shut down the vehicle for a little bit, get the wheels going again. Now Mo we're ready. Motivational purposes. Yeah. So today we are bringing to you a first round mock draft for the 2019 fantasy football season. Twelve teams, half PPR. What we're going to do is take turns, as if we are the owners of four separate teams each. I'm going to have the one pick, Animal's going to have the two, Snacks will have the three, so on and so forth. So that's the rules. That's really no more ground rules, I don't think. We're going to take our player. Simple. We're going to give some analysis as to why we're taking the player there. If you agree or disagree, let us know in the comments below. If you find the information to be valuable, if you enjoy this goddamn episode, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a rating and review on the podcast on iTunes. We're on Stitcher, Spotify, where all the fucking things are, all the audio things are. So put some goddamn headphones in your head like they're in Snacks' head. Throw them into the floor and listen to our beautiful <laughs> voices. That being said, let's play the intro music, baby. All right, so I'm going to kick things off with the 101 in the 2019 fantasy football draft happening in January. <laughs> I will select Todd Gurley, running back of the Los Angeles Rams. This is going to be the year that I finally stop fading Todd Gurley. Yeah. <laughs> this is, there's no conceivable argument for me as to why he's not the 101 in 2019. Second straight year, he finishes as the overall number one fantasy running back in half point PPR, despite missing two games this year. And a game last year. Uh, Barkley was on his tail this year, and I believe Barkley was the overall number one in PPR. Full Best PPR. running back in football. But, yep, no, no doubt about that. But, unfortunately, talent does not trump all in fantasy football. Correct. Gurley's still edging him out in the half point and the standard. Uh, and in fantasy points per game, Gurley was actually a full three fantasy points per game better than Barkley. Uh, he finished with 1,831 yards from scrimmage, which is 131 yards per game. And he would have crushed the 2,000-yard mark uh, for the second straight year if he had played the full slate of 16 yeah, games. Yeah. The touchdown numbers were what did it uh, were what did it for him again this year and is what you can't argue against, right? 21 total touchdowns for Gurley this year. That is averaging one and a half per game. 14 games, 21 total touchdowns. Fucking insanity. It doesn't look like these are fluky considering the offense that he's in. Uh, you look at the Rams, right? In 2017, they led the NFL in scoring 29.9 points per game. They actually edged that by an extra three points this year. 32.9 points per game. Uh, ironically, they actually fell back to the number two behind the Chiefs because Patrick, my God, Holmes did his thing. Over but uh, this 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 offense is clearly not going anywhere, which means neither are Gurley's scoring opportunities. It's the reason why he's sitting with you know 21 touchdowns in 14 games. His goal line carries, his 10 zone carries. He finished first in the NFL this year, 18 goal line carries, which was exactly the number he had in the previous year. Also. First in the NFL. He's led the NFL in red zone, 10 zone, goal line carries for two straight seasons. The Rams have the number one ranked run blocking line in the NFL per Football Outsiders, PFF. Four of their five offensive linemen starters are under contract through next season. Uh, Roger Saffold's the only guy not under contract. Cooper Cup back in 2019. This offense should be rolling again. Full force, ready to dominate, led by Gurley. The only way, the only way I see him moving out of the 101 for me is if this offseason, maybe, maybe they take a look at the 2018 season and they say, uh, you know what, we're going to kind of pull back on his workload a little bit. Maybe we want to have him ready for the playoffs. Um, so they kind of keep him a little bit fresh. And they're saying like, hey, we're going to bring in maybe a pass catching guy, right? There are guys like TJ Yeldon, Ty Montgomery, Darren Sproles, Blah Powell, Corey Grant, all unrestricted free agents this offseason. Um, so if they talk about how they want to pull back on the workload so he's fully healthy for next year's playoffs and they bring in a guy who's like a legitimate proven pass catcher, it's the only way I would even consider going elsewhere with the one-on-one. But Todd Gurley, and I pass it over to Maximus Animal for the 102. So 
A lot of people are going to disagree with this pick. I do. But uh, I'm going with Ezekiel Elliott for the uh, 102. And my reason for this is pretty much because, listen, what Saquon did this year was awesome. And he probably is the number one running back in the NFL. I don't know what's going to happen next year with the Giants. I don't know what's going to happen with the O-line, with the quarterback situation. And the reason I'm going with Zeke is because the offensive line was still solid this year. It was a top 10 offensive line. They were number three when it came to for, for power, which I, I, as me, I love that stat. I love power. <laughs> you're, Anything, like, you're like fucking Marvin Lewis, yeah, bro. Exactly. You're, you're living in the Stone Age. Yeah, so the power of success is what I was looking at. Number three for Dallas. Football Outsiders? Yes, for their offensive line. And that's without Travis Frederick, who I feel like a lot of people forget. He did not play at all this year. Best center in the league. Easily. So that's going to bring a whole new level to it. Plus, the Cowboys... So. Didn't really click all the way through this whole year. You know, they got Amari Cooper late, and now I think the team is kind of rolling. So next year they're going to roll right into it. Dak's going to get an extension. Thank God. You know the whole party's <laughs> going to be there together. Zeke was averaging 19 and a half points a game. Finished with 292 points total. That's what I want for my my first round pick. Yeah. The crazy thing is, dude, 95 targets, 77 receptions. Absolutely, it more than doubled any of his like previous year's uh reception numbers yeah his total touchdowns were not that great this year only six rushing touchdowns yeah only so six much rushing touchdowns there. only three receiving touchdowns which is why and he still finished you know top five overall for running backs so i think the second so half much, of the year he went nuts yeah too. exactly and that's when you know when cooper comes in all the, and the team finally you know puts itself together i think next year when he comes in he's just gonna explode yeah it's hard to argue against him because his floor is just so high yeah you look at the first two years too like he played in 25 games had uh, 24 total touchdowns. He still led the NFL in rushing this year. Mm -hmm. So the, the touchdowns were fluky. Those are things that are going to fluctuate. So you'd yes. expect those to bounce back up. So Zeke's pretty good candidate for double digit touchdowns and probably going to be the, uh, the odds on favor to lead the league in rushing just because they for the, depend that, so did heavily he lead on it in last year too. This, Dak this can't year he didn't row, right? because he only played in 10 games. He had the suspension, Oh, but he was in terms of rushing yards per game. Yes. Yeah, he did. He, yeah. But um, that's right. I forgot. This one two there and is, um, I don't think we're going to be obvious. any surprise here, but, well, with the layup of the year, <laughs> thank you, Max, Animal, Listen. I'm taking Saquon Barkley, and I mean, there's a strong case you could take him one-on-one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's the best oh, yeah. running back in football. He was a rookie this year. 261 carries, 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns. How many did you say Zeke had? Total? Yeah, total. And nine. Nine, right. So, Barkley had 11 rushing. He had four receiving, along with 91 receptions, and 730 yards. I mean, I don't know. What is that? Second to McCaffrey? Yeah, it is. 91 receptions. Second to McCaffrey. Third in yards to McCaffrey and Kamara. Easily, easily the best running back in football. He had the 29th ranked offensive line. It's only going to get better. Little Dino, oh, I don't know anything about the Giants. I do. That <laughs> offensive line got so much better throughout the year, and it's only going to get better because Dave Gettleman, our general manager, believes in hog mollies, as he calls them, in the offensive line. It's only going to get better. He calls the, the line hog mollies. Hog mollies. Those incredible. are his <laughs> offensive linemen or hog mollies. So that offensive line is only going to get better after another year in his system. Shermer's system, everything. Barkley's going to touch the ball a million and a half times. There's no running back behind him. He gets all the goal line carries, everything. 15 total touchdowns, 2,000 all-purpose yards. You're a fucking idiot for taking Zeke, too. I was looking at some of the numbers today. He had, because he led the league in, in rushes of 40-plus yards. Yeah. He had seven of them. So he's basically giving you a 40-plus yard run. Just one run of 40 yards like every other game. It's ridiculous. Unbelievable. He could break it at any point. Mm -hmm. He's had games where he was, it was like 10 carries for 20 yards, but he'd finish with 100 because he'd break a 50-yard run, a 60-yard run, whatever the case is. Yeah, you don't have a lot of workhorses where you could be like, oh, he's got home run ability too. It's like you had the Chris Johnsons. Like maybe like Jamal Charles was a guy who was like kind of a workhorse, but he didn't get the workload that Barkley got. No, and, he, no. and Barkley's 20 Barkley times was more special than Jamal Charles. This year. I love and appreciate what Jamal Charles did for the fantasy community, mm -hmm. but Barkley's just, he's special. You're yeah. not worried at all that the Giants might you know, pull him back a little bit next year? Why the fuck would I be worried about I that? I don't think they're going to do know. that. Why? They I, drafted him two overall. Know, what do you think? They're going to give him less carries to Wayne Gallman? They're going to rest him up for the playoffs, right? For yeah. Super Bowl Oh, run, yeah, maybe? exactly. Okay. For your playoff run. <laughs> okay. You all threw me off. Number three pick, Saquon Barkley. I don't even need an explanation, okay? Okay. It's that simple. 29th ranked offensive line. Only going to get better. 15 total touchdowns. 2,000 all-purpose yards. 91 receptions. He's a dual threat. 21.4 fantasy points a game. You don't beat that. Sorry. Three overall, steal. Boom. I think those have to be... Mm, actually, okay. With the 104, 
We're going with Christian McCaffrey here. I think he has an argument to be in that top three as well, just based on just what he did this year. I mean, coming into the year, question marks were like, would he really take over that workhorse role? Does he get the goal line carries? Will he uh, improve in efficiency, right? 3.7 yards per carry he averaged during his rookie year. Uh, There's no question about his involvement in the passing game, obviously, but like, Jesus fucking Christ. 124 targets. Dude, like, it's it's nuts. Yeah, and he set the NFL record this year for the most receptions uh, by a running back in a single season with 107, Mm -hmm. and he's the first running back to hit that, you know, that Benjamin Franklin mark since I think (laughs) Matt Forte did it in in 2014 with 102. But in terms of playtime, man, it was ridiculous. He played on 91% of the Panthers' offensive snaps this year. He played on only 70% of them in 2017. So they were saying all summer, they're like, we're going to use this guy. We're going to use this guy. Hard to trust coaches, though. You know what I mean? For the first time, I think, ever, the coaches were right. Exactly. But the thing was, um, and a lot of people underestimate preseason. Now, no one, you shouldn't look at box scores. You shouldn't look at that. But when preseason comes, the one thing you need to start looking at is snap counts. Because that will Mm -hmm. tell you what coaches actually believe is their first team offense. Who they want to be. And we saw throughout the summer... McCaffrey was running 95% of the snaps with the first team offense that translated. So he got a 25% boost in terms of snaps. He saw 95% of the Panthers running back touches this year, despite like barely playing in week 17, 95% of the touches in that backfield. Ridiculous. That's what you want on your team. Exactly. He finished with just under um, 2000 yards from scrimmage. It's crazy how many guys were close to that number this year. Uh, 1965 yards from scrimmage, 13 total touchdowns, seven by ground, six by air. Actually, he had that 50-yard touchdown um, against the Saints in Week 15. Passing touchdown? Yeah, it is. I th- I know that one holds a, a nice dear place in your heart. So uh, he actually does hit 14 touchdowns, which doubles his touchdown totals from a year ago. He saw 130 more touches this year than he did last year, uh, and a lot of them were by the end zone. Man, he finished fourth fourth in the NFL with 46 red zone carries, fifth with 29 10 zone carries, seventh with 12 goal line carries, um, and he converted six of 12 into touchdowns. Last year, he saw literally just two goal line carries, which was 9.5% of the team's goal line carries. And the last thing that I thought was interesting was was their offensive line, right? So he averaged 3.7 yards per carry his rookie year. And everyone's like, okay, maybe he's not a good runner in the NFL. And it was because that offensive line was bad. They get rid of Andrew Norwell, right? They're all pro left guard this offseason. He goes and signs with Jacksonville. And you're like, oh my God, he's like really fucked with that offensive line. But they actually improved. They went from the 25th ranked run blocking unit in 2017 to the 11th in uh, per football outsiders DVOA. So somehow they went from really bad to way better by subtracting. I don't know. Sometimes the subtraction by addition or addition by subtraction Mm -hmm. works. The NFL is unexplainable, man. I don't really get it. But all I know is C-Mac is getting 95% of the touches on this team. And a lot of them are coming by way of air. And the thing about guys that are small, like C-Mac and Kamara too, a lot of people's worries are like, oh, their touches are too high. They won't be able to withhold it the whole season. But it's like when such a high percentage of your touches are through the air, you don't take the hits that like a running back takes. No, you, you don't. Know? You're, in, open you're in the open space. Exactly. You go down when you want. So you're taking like 30% you less see, hits. Kamara is very smart. He runs out of bounds a lot if you yes. watch like the games. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like when you, when you have those guys, if you're concerned about like the size of them holding up throughout the course of a season being a workhorse, that, that – should be taken into account a little bit less. And the same thing with Kamara. So uh, C-Mac at, at the 104, love that as a workhorse, high-end RB1. Let's move on to 105, Mr. Animal. So 105, I am taking Melvin Gordon. And the reason I Melvin. took Melvin, I mean, if you watch him play, he's just, he's amazing. The guy carrying the ball, catching the ball, he does it all. 14 total touchdowns this year. Now, the only thing that, you know, he only played 12 games this year. He was a little banged up. Uh, Fuck me. Yeah, you know, he screwed some people. I'm, I'm sticking with that pick. He averaged, you know, 20.5 points a game. And he only had 175 rushing attempts this year. Yeah. And he still managed to put up 246 total points. So that's like the theme of these top guys. It's like, you know, Zeke too. Like the guys that are up there, you need them to be yeah. wide receiver twos as well as your Yeah, RB1. well, that's Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon had 50 receptions this year. Mm-hmm. For, you know, in in just 12 games. That's yeah, exactly. like four and a half a game almost. That's crazy. He had 66 targets in 12 games. So, I mean, imagine you throw another four games in there. 14 total touchdowns in 12 games. It's over one a game. It's like, he t- it seems like he took a, a jump up this year. He like, was, as yeah, a runner, like so a talent. Well, you know he, what I mean? So good. So, the, the Chargers line was a top five line uh, overall. Inside the five-yard line, Melvin Gordon had only eight attempts this year. And still managed to have 14 total touchdowns. So, imagine if next year he's getting more carries in the goal line. 
Which I, you I theoretically just, should when I, your best player. I do also think, though, he had a lot of receptions down at that part. Of the, like, it, I remember in the beginning of the year, the first half, so much of that, like, 10 zone and red zone offense was throwing to the running backs between Eckler he's the and Melvin Gordon. He gets Gordon. all the dump like off the next passes. Yeah, so it's like even if he's not getting the rushing touches down there, he's getting Still in getting a different the ball. way. He's well, yeah, in, inside the red zone, I think Melvin Gordon's the go-to guy. Does Let me ask you something. Does uh, Hunter Henry coming back next year as a red zone weapon, as well as Mike Williams kind of emerging a little bit, uh, make you a little bit nervous about his touchdown upside no not at all Me i think if anything it helps the other teams are thinking oh we got to watch henry we got to watch williams and then here oh, here comes a gordon right yeah. up the middle melvin and he's that damn good too yeah so. he looked legit like the first couple of years i was always like yeah i like him and he's, he's he should be good for well, fantasy his but first year he was terrible terrible well, who was his fucking offensive coordinator or his head makes, coach mike fucking all the mccoy difference. That's why. It makes all the difference. It really yeah. does. Boy, what a beast. <laughs> what a <laughs> goat. Beast. Big goat. Just trashing running backs' careers since 2000. Un- what? It, it, dude, like, what are you doing in the front office that Mike McCoy steps into your <laughs> office and you think it's a good idea to hire him after he leaves? What could he be saying in the fucking, in that meeting? Well, he's like Marvin Lewis. He's probably got nudes. Dude, Mar- <laughs> he's, got, he's, got, he's got a binder full. Dude, dude you know, know Marvin yes, Lewis dude. has been, had been their head coach since 2003? 16, 16, 16 years. A year before years. Tom Coughlin, yeah. yeah. Oh my God, dude. He was the longest tenured head coach, right? By far. Where is he? How yeah. long has Bill Belichick been there for? Like 14, 13, 14 year years. No, less. Belichick was before 2003. It has to be longer. I was going to say, because that was our, yeah. You they sure? won the Super Bowl in 2001. That's true. Yeah, I was going to say, but Marvin Lewis, dude, since 2003, it's insane. But Belichick doesn't count in any, like, Yeah, category. oh, you know what? Maybe no. the stat I saw was other than Bill Belichick. Was like, okay. Yeah, I'm sure it was. And Marvin Lewis, his record in the playoffs is 0-7. 0-7. 0-7. I mean, he had, like, a— He had a five-year like, run, it, like, uh, from, I think it was, like, 2010, maybe, to 15 or something, where it was, like, you know, playoffs every single year. Yeah. They were good. The, yeah. the Bengals were very good. They yeah. always got there. They just could never win. No. I mean, he just hasn't adapted. Never went up in it. Carson never Palmer, game. John Kitna— Beast. Beast. <laughs> Andy Dalton. You, you don't trust the ginger with anything. So. Gordon at five. Melvin Nicholas. Gordon. Thank you for another layup as I will take Alvin Kamara at <laughs> six. I don't know why you keep passing on the better players. Even though I love Melvin Gordon, he's amazing. However, Alvin Kamara is a goddamn stud. Yeah. The guy had 194 carries, just under 900 yards, 14 rushing touchdowns. Second in the NFL. Mm-hmm. He doesn't stop there. 105 targets, right? 81 receptions, 700 yards, another four touchdowns. So, 14 plus four is what, Max? What was that? (laughs) God. 14 (laughs) plus four is what? 18. 18. That's 18 total touchdowns for Alvin Kamara. They average the same amount of fantasy points a game, 20.5. The Saints have a top three offensive line as ranked by PFF. Here's my thing. I don't know what Mark Ingram's status is. He did not look good coming back. He He's an game, unrestricted free agent. Unrestricted free agent. You know I the coaching staff don't like him. They don't like him. Yeah. I cannot. Alvin Kamara is the feature back there. Yes. Easily, by far. He got all the touches. Do anything for Ingram. He missed a game. He still put up 800. He, what does he put? 1,600 yards total from scrimmage. 18 touchdowns. Around there, yeah. Come on. Insanity. That's yeah. absolute insanity. I know. From the goal line, he only. Rushing attempts was only 40%. But he had 13 attempts, eight touchdowns from inside the five. Yeah, but That's it. Animal, as you were saying prior, a lot of this pick is going to be based on what happens with the players around Kamara, right? Because, like you said, Ingram's an unrestricted free agent. I don't think they're going to re-sign him. Do they take a chance? Because they can get another guy, a replaceable back, that could take up some carries. Because I'm looking at the game splits right now. Kamara, first four games, right, when Ingram was out, mm-hmm. uh, 8.75 receptions a game. 8.75, yeah. 13.75 rushes a game. Ingram comes back down from 8.75 to four receptions a game. Right in half. Rushes attempt only go down by about one rush, but like that 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 kind of makes you nervous. Was their game plan? Not nervous, but that you know it makes you think that yeah. they might they might bring someone else in to just lighten the load a little bit on Kamara and his fantasy production. Of course, is going to fall in line mm-hmm. with with the volume there because we chase volume. In fantasy. That's what we do. Kamara's just such a special talent and such a good offense. He's that good. Mark Ingram has been very good for a long time. Yeah. So it's obvious reason to getting him the ball. But this year, he showed his true colors. He's done. He's washed. I'm sorry. Kamara Mm -hmm. is the feature back. Who do they bring in? A C.J. Anderson type? Yeah. He's not going to take away the touches that a Mark Ingram would. No. Kamara's going to get the ball. Drew Brees, I love him to death. That is a running team now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. That's a running team. They're, Kamara, they're he could run through the tackles. He could run in between them. He run outside. He does it all. The I first think it's a slam dunk pick. Yeah, their only intent Six. needs to be to keep Drew Brees on his feet. How do you do that? By That's running it. the ball and quick dump offs. Don't Easy. let him get hit. 
Number three, offensive line, ranked by PFF, PFF, like I said. Slam dunk pick at six. I would take him over Gordon. Max, you're an idiot. Mm-hmm. Let's go. 107, Let's baby. All right, so this was this was a tough pick for me, Connor, because um, Kareem Hunt would have been somewhere in the top seven, you know, had things not worked out the way they did. <laughs> so it left me kind of ch- trying to choose between. I think as soon as I made this pick, I kind of regretted it, and I almost – I wish I had went with one of the two picks that you guys went with. Uh, I ended yeah. up going with James Conner. Pittsburgh Steelers running back. This is going to be an interesting piece of analysis all summer because Bell's going to be elsewhere, of course. And we saw Connor just like take over that running back role and just prove that one, running backs don't matter. Two, Bell didn't matter and he was a fucking idiot for holding out. The way I see it, them opening 2019 is Connor has to be the feature back there. They used him that way. Have to. He played in 13 games this year, finished as RB7 points per game basis, went for nearly 1,500 yards from scrimmage, 13 touchdowns in just 13 games. So you're looking at 113 yards a game plus a touchdown per game. When he was healthy, weeks one through 13, 80% of the snaps, 86% of the touches, everything was going well. Uh, 4.5 yards per carry, 215 carries. He was getting that workhorse role, fourth in the NFL in runs of 15 plus yards. He did that while seeing the sixth highest percentage of his carries against stacked boxes per playerprofiler.com. And I can spew out all these fucking random facts for you, all the big facts if you want. Um, Basically what I'm saying is he did really well in 2018 for them to, there's no way they consider him not being the featured back going forward. But the most important thing I look at when I see this is because if you're taking over for the Bell role, the reason Bell was so fucking good in fantasy was the receiving aspect. Mm -hmm. And Connor kind of stepped in there and did, I would say- It wasn't that big of a drop off. 70% to 85% of what Bell did in the receiving game. 55 passes he caught for nearly 500 yards and a touchdown, 71 targets in those 13 games. You know, there were certain weeks, if you own Connor anywhere, you wish you got a little more from him on the ground. Uh, in thirteen, in three of his 13 games, he saw just single-digit carries, right? If he's your RB1, you don't want to see eight, nine carries. But I'm looking at those weeks and his involvement in the passing game in those weeks, right? You have week two, he only had eight carries, but he caught five of five targets. So he caught five balls. In week four, he had nine carries versus a tough Baltimore team. And he saw seven targets. Week 11, Jacksonville saw nine targets. So in the games, he wasn't getting the rushing workload. It was probably a game scripting. He was getting the passing workload. So it tells you he's not game script dependent. The Steelers don't plan on taking him off the field or phasing him out, right? And that's what you want from your first round pick. The other thing that I thought was crazy, and I brought this up, the stat on like an episode that we did a couple of weeks ago. So like James Conner's goal line carries, he had 15 goal line carries this year inside the five, 15 goal line carries. Le'Veon in the last three seasons combined had only 14 goal line carries. So Conner had more than him in 12 games compared to 33 games for yeah, Bell. that's insane. Which is crazy, right? Converted at a very high level. Nine of 15 of his, his carries went for um, goal line scores. Those 15 carries inside the goal line were third in the NFL. And I'm looking at the games he missed, right? Stephen Rid- Stephen Ridley and Jalen Samuels both got two in those games. Mm-hmm. So four of them, which would have went to Connor if he was Most playing. likely, yes. Yeah. So that would have given him 19 goal line carries on the year. Connor had he not missed those games, would be the leading running back in the NFL in terms of goal line carries this year. So it's like, what else do you want from Connor? That being said, though, he only played in 13 games. This is the second year in a row he's missed three, if not more, games with a lower body injury. Health is an issue. When does yes. that, yeah, does that does that concern you guys? Like, what's your analysis? I want to hear your guys' opinions. I mean, Connor. as a running back and you miss, I'm not saying every running back is going to play 16 games. It's just, if you're not Saquon Barkley, it's just not, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So I got to throw that in. But yeah, I mean, it does kind of concern me. And I don't think the Steelers' offense was inept without him. They weren't as good, but, you know, missing three games and these things kind of linger. He was, wasn't the highest draft pick. He wasn't the highest touted running back coming out. He's been great. It's a great fit for him, but absolutely the injury concerned me. But I would not I would not hate myself taking Connor at seven. He's heading yeah. to his first Pro Bowl this year, too. Great he's, season he's, by a great God, player. He, he was unbelievable. Great was story. Unbelievable. A lot of greatness going the great on. Great offensive line in he's Pittsburgh. He's my seven, but definitely I would say he's one of those players that if you are a risk-averse drafter in the first yeah. round, he's someone that you would likely stay away with right. because the next few guys, the wide receivers, have just been so fucking consistent at such a high level. So Correct. Connor has the upside because you want an RB. The biggest advantage you could have in fantasy is having like a high-end RB1. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Connor has the upside for that, but he is a little risky. So we'll move on to the 108. That seventh pick might be the worst pick of the draft. That's going to be really, <laughs> really, really pick. tough. We're going to pause because it. Because those six there. running backs... After this, after this we're going to pause it. Those six running backs are off the charts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. you. I, I could take... I could take either one at one. And I would, feel comfortable. If I got any one of those six, I'd be fine. Yep. Exactly. I would be okay with it. Yep. Yep. Got a letter I had to mail today from saying my 
like they're missing a tax form or something. You know, something. Bro, I did like I because I have to I have to do taxes quarterly because if you have the majority of your income come through like 1099s or whatever, yeah. you have to do that. Well, you can you do the estimated, right? I, I have to estimate. Yeah. yeah, you have to do it in the beginning of the year, which is really fucking hard for yeah, me to do. You don't know what you're going to make. No all. idea. Yeah. Right. So I, I, I have to do it in the beginning and then pay taxes based off that. But like I did the first two payments through like the the New Jersey government website and mm -hmm. then the second two payments through the, like the IRS website. And I'm like, accidentally, I didn't mean yeah. to do that. And now I'm like, I don't know. Like I definitely fucked it up and I'm kind of nervous. Yeah, I need an accountant. Cause it was due January f two days ago. I got it in on time, but I don't I, know if you did it right. I got it in on the wrong thing on time. Listen, it's going to be all right. No, it's probably not. Yeah. It's I know good. somebody. Who As Vinny out. Chase said, it always works out. <laughs> It always works yeah. out. It always works out. Remember that out. spoof video on Entourage it. that like the one guy made like a spoof? Vinny, what are you doing, bro? Be like, some guy no, pretended to be this. the character. Are you serious? Oh, dude. How did you not show me this? This was uh, this got popular like Probably five really years ago. really old. Yeah, I think I know Damn. what you're talking about. It's really old. And like every 10 seconds, you'd be like, it's all going to work out, yeah. bro. <laughs> like they keep saying that over and over again. I just, oh, no. Now Vince can't do the movie because the studio head hates him. Turtle, relax. It's not going to work out. Well, that's great news, Ari. Right? Hey guys, studio head says Vince can do it. Hey, oh, hey. Way to go, baby, bro. <laughs> yeah, bitches, we own this town. Hey. Right. What did I tell you guys? Yo, Vince can't do the movie because his mom just got shot. What? Yeah, bro. Wait. Sorry, bro. Wait. That's my mom, too. <laughs> great news, guys. Scientists found a way to bring Vince's mom back from the dead. That's great. Now Vince can do the movie. Yeah. Hey. That's what I'm talking about, baby bro. Yeah, bitches, we f***ing run this city. Didn't I tell you it was all gonna work out? I remember crying when the Entourage movie came on. Remember, it was the, it was like the day before it was supposed to come out, and they were like, it's showing early. And we are like, oh my god, oh my god. Yeah, fuck so you. Started yeah. fucking crying. Cry no, if you watch Sloan this, and, fuck you, and bro. And Eric got back together. You cried over that? There goes your chances Sloan. of getting back really? with Sloan. I love, I, love I, the, I love the love story there. I actually, I cried tears when Johnny Drama won his award in the movie. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> I Victory! Didn't, I, didn't, I didn't cry tears, but it was good. I he literally it. goes, he's just What else would you cry? <laughs> Mark Wahlberg goes, what is he goes? You could fuck it later or yeah, something. Oh, yeah. uh, what a show. Classic. All right, Max, I think you're up on the uh, one. What number pick are we here? Eight. The no, eighth? Seven. Eight. Eight, yeah, because he went seven with Connor. Eight. So for 108, I'm going with the first wide receiver off the board, Devontae Adams. Good player. And... And I, I went back and forth with this, you know, between him and Hopkins. This year in our draft. Late second. You yeah, got him, right? I took him in the second, yes. <laughs> What'd the, you do with him? With the, <laughs> What'd you I do with him? him? You dumbass. You made every wrong move there was to make. I got yeah. panicked when Rodgers went down. I thought he was going to be done for the year. I thought he was going to easily. I didn't think he was going to fight through this. It's okay. Stupid it's all bitch. right. Devontae Adams won me a I got in my own head, so. It's okay. It anyway, I'm sorry, go. I messed anyway, up your mojo. Anyway, I, I'm going with Devontae Adams because he... Let's see here. Is Where good? should I start? There's so much here. I'm going to start with Aaron Rodgers as his quarterback. Aaron Rodgers. 272 overall points, 13 total touchdowns, 15 games played with 169 targets and 111 receptions. Now, he had a chance to break that record that was in Green Bay. He didn't. He didn't play the last game. So he what would have record? broken the It was, uh, I think, Sterling Sharp's a single season receiving record. It was a Green Bay record that he could have easily broken. And just, yeah, when you say the record, like, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think people know. know I'm pretty what you're sure it was about. Sterling Sharp's single season. Who is Sterling record? Sharp? Sh Sharp's brother. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 112 receptions. Devontae Adams had 111. So that was the record that he could have broken, but he did not play the last game. It's like Kittle not getting five yards for the dude. Yeah, exactly. Dude. So, and he, you know, on top of that, he averaged 18.1 points a game. He finished fourth overall amongst wide receivers, and he had uh, he was on the field 93% of the time, 93% of the snaps. And also, I don't know if you know this, but they just hired Matt Lafleur as the head coach. That's in, breaking news, big in dog. Green Bay. Got a, that's an exclusive. That's a nice offensive mind that I think is going to really do some great things in Green Bay. So hopefully that will translate into Devonte Adams even going higher and and higher. And, and higher. So I'm looking at his numbers too. He doesn't have a single game this year with fewer than 12 fantasy points. He's, yeah. he's at 12. 12, no, no, 12 yeah, was, was his floor, crazy. and he, he was, was consistently good. between 16 and 20. He was that mm -hmm. good. Yeah. And Wait, so you're talking about Matt LaFleur. So why don't we tell the people who Matt LaFleur is? The guy that couldn't make he was Marcus the, Mariota uh, the number two pick. That, he was the, ex, exactly. uh, he's the, the old Rams quarterback's coach and now the Titans offensive coordinator and now the Green Bay Packers head coach. 
Exactly. He screams pussy to me. But. So, yeah. The, He's my skinny. Only, my only He's concern skinny. is this. Like, people are going to get excited about it. That's going to be the analysis. But people are just literally just going to ride on the fact that he was the offensive coordinator for – well, he was actually the quarterback's yes. coach for Atlanta when Matt Ryan is MVP season, moved over to the Rams. Yes. Went from quarterback's coach to OC for the Rams. Uh, was 20, the OC? 2017. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 I made a mistake there. He was quarterback's coach, Falcons, OC. Quarterback coach, 2017. Falcons. Okay. My concern is just that, like – he finally gets the chance to really run his own offense in Tennessee, right? Because he was the OC in the, in LA. Yeah. But well, uh, McVay, that was McVay's yes. offense. It's all McVay's. Right. And he was the quarterback's coach in Atlanta. That doesn't fucking do anything. No. Matt Ryan's a 10-year vet the already talent, at that point. The talent on that team is, yeah. Right. He was a 10-year vet. You're not changing anything about Matt Ryan's game. So my concern is just like people are just going to attach those kind of things to Matt LaFleur and be like, oh, he's the next great offensive mind. When in reality, has he done anything on his own to tell you that he is the next Offensive guy. Look at this year in Tennessee. Did anything impress you? Derrick Henry. <laughs> wow, the last three. The last, so okay, so wow, what, what, a, what a builder of his resume. It took him took him thirteen weeks to realize he's got to give Derrick Henry the ball thirty times a game. Anything's better than what are the Packers point, doing? Any, That's a prestige job with a great quarterback. What the. F- what are I, they I, doing? The more I think I, about it, the more I'm like, ooh, I don't know about that's that. That's a bit of a shaky hire. And I think that's a quick hire, too. What for you, the Packers, yeah. Looking at, looking at the other names on the wire. You know who I would have yeah. loved in Green Bay? I'm sorry to go off a little topic. Go. I know He just took the Bucks job. Big dogs got to eat breaking fantasy news. Bruce Arians, Arians would have been perfect in Green Bay. Yeah. I agree. Absolutely I'm surprised perfect. he took the Bucks job. He has yeah, ties well, there. He has, he has, he has, he has got, ties there. Yeah, does, the that's the only way. That's the only reason why he he's going to go coach James Winston. Okay, good, good luck. <laughs> I'm excited for that. Probably brings duo. Fitzpatrick back. <laughs> Probably that's his dude. type of quarterback. Hell yeah! All right, so you go with Devontae Adams. Can't argue Can't there. Go Consistency wrong. tethered to Aaron Rodgers. I mean, yeah, what? I think he can only get better every year. I mean, yeah, and he's only that was only his third the year. The Packers man. suck this year. Only his they third did, year. The Packers had a terrible year, and he still had a great year. Imagine if they have a great year. He just turned 26. man. Yeah, he's a stud. So he's he's hitting the prime of his career and the ceiling is he, he turned into like a real route runner too. Like yes. he's a all around game. All around game. He's clean, yep. man, and everything. Exactly. Yep. So Nicholas, I believe you have the one oh nine. I certainly do. And Max, this isn't a layup because I give you crop props. Devontae Adams is a great pick. However, I'm taking DeAndre Hopkins over him. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of hard not to when you think about it. Guy had hundred sixty three targets, caught hundred fifteen balls, and guess how many he dropped? How many? How many times did Eli Manning lose in the Super Bowl to New England? <laughs> Zero. Zero. That's how many drops DeAndre Hopkins had this year. <laughs> he also had 11 touchdowns. 17.5 fantasy points a game. That's second to Tariq Hill, which still blows my mind because the guy only caught 87 balls, but he's just he's like freak. Six of them are Big play. He's a yeah. freak. His usage rating was the highest out of any receiver. Um, I think he was 99% of snaps. 99.99% <laughs> is unbelievable. The I'm guy is he's all world. Houston's all line is not good, but that's okay because the De- De- Deshaun Sean. Watson scrambles around. The chemistry between those two is impeccable. They traded for Thomas from Denver. He didn't do anything. I think he caught a touchdown his first catch in Houston. I don't think he did anything after that. This has got to be the last year on like D, D- Thomas. I, probably is. Ex- yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't look into that. And I, Fuller's I, going to be back in Kiki. Uh, KT is gonna Kiki, take Kiki. Over, and I apologize for that. I didn't look into that, but he is he's no factor. Kiki Kitty 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 is their number two, and Kiki that's Kuchi. not taking anything away from DeAndre. You could triple quadruple team, it doesn't matter. It doesn't he's matter. Catch he's getting the targets every he's game, he's gonna catch the goddamn ball. Watson is throwing it up to him, he is that damn good. The guy, he's all world, he doesn't miss a pass, he doesn't miss a snap. You can't go wrong. If I'm getting him at nine, I'm going with sperm bank and I'm going to donate some sperm because I'm taking be DeAndre. While. I'm taking DeAndre at nine, and I will never, ever, ever regret it. He's yeah. that damn good. The thing you got to love about DeAndre Hopkins too, he gets so many deep balls. Like he was leading the NFL in terms of like air yard share, Dude. right? So it's like when you have a guy like Deshaun Watson who fucking throws the ball up there recklessly and tethered to your fantasy wide receiver, it's like you. I mean, you hate that as a Texans fan sometimes because it gets reckless, but that's part of his game, and that's what's going to lead to DeAndre Hopkins yeah. having those fucking monster and games. And the fact that he still does it with two, there's always two guys. He's on a, he's him. Always, always getting double there's no covered. downside, always. right? And that won't happen Catching when Fuller's back next year, and they have a legit key. Fuller, key. you're right. I didn't even bring up Fuller. Fuller exactly. was killing it. Yeah, he was really he good. He was killing, and that's when DeAndre's biggest stretch was. Yeah, when Fuller was take in away there. from D Hop's production at all either. God, no, he stretches damn. the field and helps him. That that offense has a lot of lot of untapped upside there between the offensive line and the running game and shit too like i'm excited to see what they do if i'm a texans fan you know they're uh, future's bright they're bums i mean they suck denver's doing good nick <laughs> anyways speaking of our respective teams at the 110 the first double digit pick 
Julio Jones at the 110. I just think between all these wide receivers that we're talking about, Devontae, DeAndre, Julio, I think they're kind of a carousel on who you want to take at at the first wide receiver off the board. I mean, bird's eye view, you're looking at Julio's season, great, right? You look at the numbers, he leads the NFL in receiving yards. Some fucking how doesn't get first team all pro as a wide receiver. I don't know how that how that happens. We need to readjust whatever process they have there. Leads the when NFL. Did they vote on that? Because was it earlier in the year when he didn't have touchdowns? What did they, why would they? It's it's just the fans. Uh, well, a first team All Pro is is the actual votes. Yeah, I don't know how they did it. It was Michael Thomas and Julio ended up leading the NFL in targets, wide receiver three in fantasy, just under seventeen hundred yards, eight touchdowns, ten separate games of hundred plus receiving yards. And he turned it. To, he turned it to f on exactly at the end of the i'm year. about yeah. to get in right so from a bird's eye view you're like holy shit but if you're really looking at the numbers you're looking at a tail of two fucking halves for julio jones he didn't catch a single touchdown through atlanta's first seven games right it was like a running joke at that point you, so i was almost rooting for him just to put up 1700 yards and not catch a touchdown just because it'd be kind of funny right Hysterical. um he saw 81 targets through those first seven games no touchdowns week eight though he finds pay dirt and then he just doesn't know how to stop right winds up scoring eight touchdowns in their final nine games goes over 100 yards in six of those nine games scores more than 17 fantasy points in all but two of those nine games so despite the narrative of him never getting in the end zone him not scoring touchdowns throughout his career he's now scored eight or more touchdowns in half of his his seasons and he only saw seven targets inside the 10 yard line this year seven targets that's stupid two of them came in that very first game against philly two of them came there uh three of them were in the game versus cleveland so, so you're looking at five targets in, in the in between right, in Cleveland games. and Philly. Cleveland and Philly, five targets in the ten. Those other fourteen games, two targets inside the ten yard line, still wound up with eight touchdowns. Right. So, and that was good to see. He leads the NFL in targets in a year where Austin Hooper took a step up in the receiving game. Calvin Ridley emerged as a as a good threat outside. Right. So Julio still eats, still leads the league in targets, maintains his elite twenty eight percent targets here on the team. Tied with DeAndre Hopkins in terms of air yard share on the team. So, I mean, there's no reason to think. I'm, I'm excited to see what they do at OC there because they get rid of Steve Sarkeesian. They got rid of the drunken. That's what I was going to say. I'm yeah. glad you brought it up. And I don't like to always use the analysis that, you know, the change at coaches is kind of us yelling about LaFleur. But everyone's first reaction is like, oh, yeah, they brought in this new guy. Could be a bad thing. You know, that always that that happens sometimes. Yeah, you don't really know well. until Very you see well. what happens. Exactly. So it's gonna it's gonna depend on who they bring in. I don't think it's gonna change anything with Julio. No reason to think his elite yeah, fantasy. He's production a household name. You, you, you yeah. own him, you're happy. Fourteen hundred yards and like eighty plus he's receptions so in like five or six straight years. I have nothing about his game said he's slowing down now. So if Julio, one ten, I get another him at layup. 10. I get him at ten, I'm taking it to the bank. I don't complain at all. Exactly. So one eleven, sir. This is another one I struggled with. But um, I ended up going. Here. I ended up going with Michael Thomas. It was it was between Michael Thomas and and as much as you don't believe me, Tyreek Hill. I mean, Antonio Brown's a guy that I don't you know, should that. be popping up, but I love Tyreek Hill. Anyway, Michael Thomas is who I went with. 147 targets, 125 receptions, 1405 receiving yards, nine touchdowns, 257 fantasy points. I think that Michael Thomas is I don't want to say underrated. But I don't know if he gets enough love. In well, the first half of the year, he was on fire. I was first just going to say, that's the, thing. the second half of the year, he was not. Him he, and Kamara were dwindled. like so good. But yeah. like, I'm looking at his game logs now. He has like a lot of underwhelming games. Yeah. 47 yeah. yards, like, yep. 74, 69, 70, there's 38, a lot of, 40, there's 29. There's a lot of outliers yeah. in there. Yeah, and it's games like, where it's monster games or it's like, eh. Seven points. That's why that's why he kind of scares, scares me. Like yep. he does have a good floor because he's just so good and he, he has Drew Brees. But dude, Drew Brees threw for like probably his career low at this point. Let me see. Oh, I, no, it was under four. I'm sorry, thirty nine hundred. Okay, still that's still low for Drew. First Brees. time under four thousand yards since two thousand five. That's sickening. So like, I was twelve. It kind of he would have got over. He only played in fifteen games, but mm-hmm. still like I don't know, dude. Something about Michael Thomas scares me. Yeah, like it's not. It doesn't scare me in the way that like picking a James Conner or a Leonard Fournette scares you because like the injury right. Right. scares you in a way that's just like <clears throat> Michael Thomas is. I, I feel like he's not going to win you. He's not going to win you your league. Correct. You know, as a first round pick, that's yeah. the kind of thing no you shot. want. And I, like you know the ceilings and the floors for most of these guys. Thomas, I, I don't know what I'm going to get. I can get forty. I can get six. What I do like, though, he had almost the same exact target numbers from 2017 to 2018, mm-hmm. but he put up like 160 more yards and four more touchdowns yeah, this he's, year. He's yeah. the clear number one guy. Drew Brees is a Hall of Famer. That's really why I went with him. Yeah. I mean, it's not I, wrong. I, I it's like the wrong. Saints offense. That offense, it's it's kind of dwindled a little bit over the past couple weeks. But, I mean, in the beginning of the year, those wins that. in fantasy are so important. Those first six, seven weeks to have a good good cushion where if you know you can win four or five of those yeah, games and you can make trades based on yeah, your depth and exactly you have a little so, leeway there yeah i i mean that was that was that was why i went with michael thomas like i told you i was back and forth how are we wrapping up at 
one oh one twelve. I am taking Antonio Brown. I hate Antonio Brown. I think. Can I interrupt real quick? Please do. I just want to say that uh, we're planning. This is in the very early stages of it. NFL draft. What weekend did I say you guys? Uh, I think it's the 20... 25th. Whenever the NFL April. draft is, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, does it fuck the thing End of it? April. Google. It's in motherfucking Nashville. Your boys here are going. We're going to buy tickets. We're going to spend the weekend there. We're going to try to get drunk and interview some fucking NFL players. We're going to get rowdy, and we want y'all there. So if you want to come meet us, I don't know why you would, but yeah. if you do <laughs> want to come hang out with us, Come catch a fucking NFL draft. I've never been, have you guys ever been to one? Never no. been to one. I've never been to one. We should have went when they were in New York. I don't know I what know, we're doing. I don't know why yeah. we didn't. Now they're all around the country, but they're going to be on the East Coast. So we're going to fucking head down there for the weekend, and we want to meet up with some of y'all. Yeah, and if there's any Philly or Dallas fans out there that want to come beat the shit at me, now's your time. <laughs> you know exactly where we're going to be. Exactly. Trust me. So I want to throw that out I now. I will fight you. Start planning. Grab your fucking boys. Grab, grab your girlfriend if you want. Yeah, bring them. Yeah, it don't matter. She ain't going to be yours at the end of the weekend. You can't take your girl to All-Star Weekend. That's not how it works. All right, fellas? Anyway, bring anyone you want down there. We want to hang out with y'all. We want get to get to know you, get to meet you, so that we're not just yelling at you via the comments. That's all I wanted to plug in there. So plan out NFL Draft Weekend. Nicholas, tell me what you're doing at the 112. Great plug season, Nick. And yes, I am taking Antonio Brown. He is a cancer to any locker room that he will go to, <laughs> and that is something that I'm allowed to say because, you know... Anyway, we don't know where he's going to be. All this thing is going on. They, they're looking to trade him. However, the guy is probably, you could still argue, he's the best receiver in the game. You he could argue. Had, yeah, yeah, you can. He had the most receiving touchdowns, 15, which I can't believe. I couldn't believe that. Career high. Career yeah. high. He's normally like, what, 8 or 9, 10, around there? He's between 8 and 12 usually. Right, yeah. right. He had 15. Yeah. He played 15 games. He had the third most targets in football. I'm sorry, tied for second. Caught 100, 104 balls for 1,300 yards and 15 touchdowns. The guy averaged 18.1 fantasy points a game. Now, this was in an offense that featured him. They had Juju on the side, but he was well-equipped. He's that damn good. We don't know where he's going to be, so he's kind of an enigma, but the talent that Antonio Brown has, you don't pass yeah, up on him it's for undeniable. a— It's undeniable. Yeah. And I—you know what, Max? I laugh at you for thinking about Terry Kill at 11. I thought about him at 12 only because of just— Pure hell yeah, I, Patrick I mean, Mahomes dude. Fuck yeah, no, that was, that's not that a bad it. pick at Those all. Those two, it's not a bad pick at all. But I picked Antonio Brown at nine in our draft this year, mm -hmm. and I thought that was a steal. And I mean, it kind of was. I mean, for yeah, for like five straight years, you don't even think about that. You don't. You know what you're gonna get. I mean, he'll, mm -hmm. he'll throw the clunker of seven points for a game. That's yeah. like his clunker. Like once, that to yeah. in the championship. Once. That's it. Of course. But 15 touchdowns, 170 targets, 169 to be exact. Nice. <laughs> That's not going to change no matter where he goes. If anything, it, it might increase. If he gets think? traded, if he gets traded. I think that the touchdowns won't increase. Okay, fine. The touchdowns not. If he was, gets traded, he's probably off my draft board in the first round. Yes. Fair. Him and Big Ben just have that, yeah, that It's combo. unbelievable. Depending it's a shame on where that he goes, but other. yes. It's a shame they hate each other. I see what you're saying. Big Ben beat him in Manduel, by the way. It is a big, <laughs> it, it's definitely a big difference. You we should have ta taken Ben at the 112. Yeah, should have. Come on now. Christ. We don't know where he's going to go. We don't know what the rapport is going to be with his quarterback. But if say he goes, say he goes to a team. I'm sorry, you know, what if he goes to a team like San Francisco, the Jets, or San Francisco? Nah, San Fran would be. That's great. a team. I, I might even move him. No, no there's no way. Move him up. The chemistry. I can't. I the can't, chemistry right, with Big Ben is, is, the, it's it's the best. It's the best. It's an unknown. We're going with Jimmy Brown G career. coming off. You're right. 100. Yeah. percent no, I just love Shanahan's system. I think anybody's good in that. I'm taking Antonio Brown at 12, and I... Shouldn't feel bad about I, it. I, but I do. I know I do. what you mean. I do. But We're sitting here January 7th. I do feel bad because I don't know his future. It's very uncertain. He's only played with one quarterback. How's he going to react to a different locker room, mm -hmm. a different coach, a different scheme, a different system, diff everything? There's a lot of variables there. Is and anything... Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm saying no, no. That's fine. Luckily, we're going to be doing much more mock drafts. So when he does yeah, get traded, if change, he doesn't, probably can yeah. move up, can move down. Times. So for right now, where I stand on January 7th, I'm finishing off the first round. A.B., his 15 touchdowns, his 100 catches, 1,300 yards at number 12. Is there anything on field, Antonio Brown-wise, that scares you? Is it strictly off-field, like these off-field 
trades or whatever the fuck yeah. it is moving to another team. Is there anything on field that you're like, ah, he's not the same Antonio Brown? No. 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 I didn't okay. see anything. No decline. No, yeah. didn't lose a And step, that's why I brought like up. Six straight catches. Six straight years of 100 plus catches. Yeah. There's a great resource, uh, airyards.com. This guy is pretty big on Twitter, Josh Hermsmeyer. He does, uh, it's basically like the NFL next gen stats, but I don't know how he gets his numbers, but he has game speed for individual players. And it tells you like what his game speed was as compared to the previous season. Okay. So, I, and then like Matt Harmon, a guy that works for Yahoo does reception perception and uh, specific receivers success rate versus man coverage, press coverage. Those are two things I look at for wide receivers to see, you know, as you get older, those are the first kind of things that drop off your game speed. Mm-hmm. And if you can beat man and press coverage off the line. Like Brown has been him, Stephon Diggs and like Tyler Lockett have been like top three for the last like four years in a row and beating press man coverage, game speed, things like that. So that will be one of the first signs I think for me is looking at Brown. Is he still that good off the ball? And if yeah. he is, and he's still in the Steelers, he should, I think you're going to get him at a discount. Yeah. Oh, easy. You I get agree. him at 12 if he's still in the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. If you're in, I'd run if you're up in a 12 to the board, man league, I would run up to the board. If you're in a 12 man league and you're in a snake draft and you can get AB and then someone else back to back. Dude, suck my dick. That's, that's what I want to do. Know, that's what I'm that's saying. money. I would take two top wide receivers there. And Brown that's the, and Hill. the only reason yeah, I take oof. AB and Tyreek Hill. Yeah. I mean, you're set. The receivers. only reason I no, said, no like, even if he goes to another team, I completely understand, Nick, what you said, his rapport with Big Ben, the skin, everything. He's just too damn good. I mean, yeah. the only concern I have is off the field. That's it. Yeah. Nothing on the field he can't do. Nothing. No, I agree. I know. Yeah. It's just the, the only thing it just concerns me is that I don't think there's a ceiling on another team. I like he, I don't think you can go up from 170 targets. Couldn't agree more. You know? I'm, I'm banging. Yeah. Like I 15 said. 15 touchdowns is insane. As I sit here on January 7th, I'm saying he's, yeah. he's a stealer. I would, I would assume he's going to be a stealer because I was looking... I don't really know all the numbers and logistics behind it, but I know that like if they cut him... there's I think there was, a, there was like a five-day period. I think it was March... Like something crazy, like March 13th to the 18th or May 13th or 18th, where if they yeah. trade him in that, they're only going to hit... They're only going to get like five million of dead okay, caps. caps mm-hmm. in. I don't know really it's like what a it is. Twenty-one million yeah, dollar cap. Twenty-one dead, if they just money. trade him whenever yeah. they want to. Yeah. 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 So they're not going to do that, of course. And but, like I, I was reading, they're trying to restructure Ben's contract because that yeah. means that they can trade him and it won't like hurt him significantly. Yeah. But they, they have to do everything. Like, why try at. that hard to trade someone who's so fucking good? He's the yeah, best. They're gonna, they're, he's not going anywhere. He's arguably the best receiver in football. Yeah. I mean, come on. We've been talking about Antonio Brown's best receiver. Ben's going to stay for another year. Then I think you. They're Why not gonna, wouldn't you they're run not going to get rid that of team him. Has more, that team has more talent than... The team's had Super Bowl talent for like eight years in a row. Ridiculous yes. talent. They just can't Why don't win. we blame the head coach? Well, that's, that, you know what? That's for a different so conversation. That's another conversation. That's yeah, a different conversation. Different just having a Super Bowl gives you eight years of leeway. And that's it's the Steelers. They've had three coaches in 40 years. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah true. That's also how they do things, yeah. They, which I respect. Which, which actually, if you think about it now, that's like the fact that they want to move Antonio Brown kind of tells you something. It tells you a lot. From the franchise standpoint. They know a lot more than we do, too. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm sure he's awful in the locker room. Yeah. I be. Bet he, Dude, he was recording a Facebook Live video of his coach at a victory speech. Are you kidding me? Yeah. He's terrible in the locker room. Conversation for a different day. This is a mock draft, but Jesus Christ, Antonio Brown. Get your shit together. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot more to come throughout the summer. I'm excited, man. We're getting an early start, but like, I'm telling you guys. I'm, I'm like, excited to see. I was you. doing this last year, but I probably started maybe two months later than this. Mm-hmm. But if we're starting now, we're by the time we get to the fucking E-Town get-down draft, you guys oh. are going to be like... We've yeah. lived five NFL seasons exactly. in this offseason. Right. And mean, that's why the NFL is the greatest thing. It never sleeps. Yeah. We're going to be doing this all summer, so much all winter, content. everything. I'm, everything. I'm, uh, I'm excited for to look at like this mock draft and then the next one, like the next like three or four that we do, yeah, and see gonna, what changes yeah. amongst those Absolutely. drafts. And with moves, like if Bell goes somewhere, he might. Yeah, like up. Le'Veon Bell can and sneak in somewhere. And what we can do maybe. also, there's uh, websites like Fantasy Football Calculator where you know how like you go into a Yahoo mock draft? Yeah. We could set it up so it's us three and then computers. And we could like pick from like the three, eight, like that. nine spot oh, or cool. something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So it's and not simulate just their picks. Pain. Yeah. So we could like talk about how we're, you know, developing a team as we're actually picking through the draft and stuff. I like, like that. that. I so like we'll do that. that. We'll we'll mess around with all the different types of mocks and stuff. So that'll wrap up the first round mock. I hope you guys in Enjoy it. I told you we're not just pieces of shit all the time. We could actually no, talk some fantasy. Dudes. We could talk dudes. some football, break down the numbers, give you the big motherfucker facts. If you enjoy this episode, hit that thumbs up uh, button. Yep, thumbs up. Leave a comment down below to help us with that YouTube algorithm and uh, rating and review on the podcast. Otherwise, we love you and we'll actually see you twice this week because we will do another video recapping the playoff games and whatnot. That's um, how much we love you. I don't know if it's going to be before seeing this or after seeing this, but either way... Um, The more of our faces you can get into your life, the better.
Can I time out? Like, yeah, I just need to make a quick comment. I um, this is, has nothing to do with you guys. If there's anybody out there who studies college football, who likes Ohio State, and you probably like that scumbag or Meyer, mm-hmm. I really, I need, if you don't mind, just dropping a comment below on your thoughts about Dwayne Haskins. And <laughs> I, I say that because the Giants could very well be in position to draft him, and that's a big change. Eli Manning's been my quarterback since I'm 11 years old. So I, I'm ready to move on, but I'm some, not. Some and expert we, advice. We, we, I need some advice. I didn't I gotcha. watch a lot of Ohio State. I watched maybe two games, like what I saw, but I need some more. So if you don't mind, please leave a comment and just let me know what you think of him and what his NFL prospects look like. Thank you, and please, thumbs up. Thank you. Have a good night. I Happy love New, New York. York.